welcome back to more of this shit by J.R. Tolkien. Uh, more deep divers tonight. It's not, not a bad name for the book. This yeah. shit by J.R. Tolkien. Yeah, just more of this shit. I mean, like that's that's basically like what it feels like as someone who started with Lord of the Rings. It's just like, oh yeah, it's just more of this shit. Cool. <laughs> and you just like look at it, you're like, yep, it's, it's definitely more of this. Um, yeah. So we we left off last week by doing uh, some of the Silmarillion, uh, and of course it is very long. So uh, we got to. I don't know how, how. What percentage of the way through what we're going to talk about do you think we got to? <sighs> Of what we're gonna talk about, yeah. half, okay. definitionally. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, of the story, like you know, maybe we did the first thirty percent. You're just gonna condense the next seventy percent. Um, I'd say that we we got through about maybe one to two thousand years of history already, and we're. Uh, in about ten minutes, going to get to the last thousand years. Which okay. You'd think uh, it means that we're two thirds of the way through, but since the last thousand years is when literally everything happens in the story. Oh, good. So we're not even close. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe a quarter of the way through. Cool. So to to start this episode, we're gonna do a little bit of a, a recap with uh, all this information that we learned last time. So, just tell me if I uh, got all this correct, basically. So I, <laughs> I have, in the beginning, Tokus Vallis. I don't write down what that meant, but I did just draw an elf smoking weed, and so I think that's just good enough. Anyways, okay. the three beings that mattered is God, except he's not really relevant, so who cares? Uh, the Valar, which is the Greek pantheon, sort of, and the Meyer, who are lesser angels, they're like, the, the like it's like Hermes, I guess. Like, yeah, technically among the gods, but like, eh, not really as powerful. I mean, actually, like, I think Hermes is basically one of the Maiar. Oh, sweet. Which one is he? We didn't talk about the Maiar. Really. Uh, we, he, we wrote meh, fuck him. <laughs> yeah, it, he doesn't matter. <laughs> cool. So for the Valar, we have uh, Olorin, who's Gandalf, and he's the best. He's just the best. Like, I, he's super wise, I guess, yeah. and he's just cool. Uh, Melkor is strongman. Um, uh, Manway is the leader of them all. Olmo's wet boy, so he's like the oceans and stuff. Uh, for all, I put Dirtman Jones, and I think that meant the Earth. I also do a, put a picture of Pigpen <laughs> from uh, Peanuts. Okay, <coughs> yeah. Uh, Orame no, that, that checks out. The Hunter. Uh, Mandos is <clears throat> Doom or Fate, basically. Yeah. Uh, Lorian is Gardens. I don't know why I scratched it out afterwards. I guess I just don't like them, and that's fair. Because you don't oh, care. Because gardens are dumb, and that doesn't make any sense. Uh, Yva Yvonne is the uh, god of living things, and she's very tall. <laughs> Tolkus is strong. <laughs> Melkor is mighty, but he's strong, and that's a difference, and we're not going to think about it. Uh, Vorta's the queen. So is Vorta and, like, Manwe, like, king and queen, essentially? Basically, Varda and Manwe are, are king and queen. Okay. And she's the god of the sky and cosmos, uh, and Nino is... Emo? I don't remember what that meant. <laughs> yeah. Nino. Oh. I think he probably wrote Nino because... Yeah. No, I, I put Nina. N-I-N-A. Okay. And okay. I, and I said she's emo. So anyways, yeah. um, here's them making the earth, and they made two Pixar lamps to light it up and realized it sucked. Uh... And then Melkor hides in a pit called Utumno. Uh, he poisons Utumno. the land with his anginess, and everyone knows it's him, and so they decide maybe <clears throat> we should do something about it. Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the Meyer try to fight him, and they realize he's winning, and then Tolkis, who we've written as Tonkas, and drew a truck, yeah. says it's cool, he'll kill him. Uh, he doesn't kill him, but he, <clears throat> he does hurt him real bad. So all the Meyer go back to Valinor. Uh, I guess he hides somewhere. Maybe that's when he goes to Umtumno. No, yeah. I don't know. Something like that. Anyways. He hides in Umtumno. Uh, back in Valinor, the tall lady from Resident Evil who I want to kill me uh, creates some trees by singing. Oh, yes. I also forgot. They go back to Valinor, and then editors note Valinor means home. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
and so yeah, she she sings some trees into existence that are gonna be super pretty. Uh, one of them's silver and is cool, and the other one's gold and doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's what you told me. <laughs> Interesting editorial note there. I'm pretty sure I didn't say that, I, but, but okay. okay. <laughs> Someone find it in the tapes. I'm pretty sure you were like the silver one's the I one that matters. I think you misunderstood in that he was like describing the trees and he's like one of them's silver and, and like the other one's like gold I don't know like it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter that they're one silver uh, one see, gold and I like, assume oh, that the silver the gold one doesn't based matter. on the silver tree and so the gold one didn't really matter because <laughs> they're, they're supposed to shine like silvery so anyways the elves are supposed to show up now but Melkor is here so big sad uh, now we time skip backwards but not like in story just to talk about what happened um Dirt Man makes dwarves, um, and then they go to sleep. Uh, Yvonne makes ints. I don't really remember what happened, like, if they also went to sleep, but they didn't count as being there before elves for some reason. Um, yeah. So back to elves. They're here now. <laughs> Flat Earth is true for now. Uh, <laughs> three kings separate all of the other elves into, like, kingdoms, and Ingwe sucks, and no one likes him. And he's just dumb and gets way less elves than everyone else because he's greedy. Uh, yep. <laughs> Orome has sweet tree tats on his face, I guess. And everyone knows that it's him. Uh, so he says, go to Valinar, and they do. Uh, Vo Who, what is... Volar? Who's... Oh, Valar. Yeah, Valar also see the elves. And they're like, oh, yeah, we should probably kill Melkor, huh? We never did that. So... They beat him up and put him in hell. I, I put hell 0 0.1 because I guess hell wasn't around yet. So, like, this was, like, yeah. the, the precursor of hell. So there's him in hell uh, for three ages, which nobody really knows what that means because there's only three ages nope. in the world and we haven't even done those yet for some reason. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, Sauron, Melkor is, like, servant slash protege. I, I guess his apprentice uh, in the craft of badness. Uh hides along with the Balrogs. Uh, some of the elves on the way to uh, Valinor say, oh, we found this cool forest called Lothlorien. We're just going to chill in here. And some of the other elves are, found some cool mountains and like, oh, these are the Misty Mountains. We're just going to chill here. Uh, and then <laughs> I, I <laughs> Thingle specifically uh, got lost yes. and found a pretty lady and he was like, well, I'm just going to bone down with her and make some like new cooler elves. Uh, so he does that. So then the rest of the elves get to Valinor. Ingwe becomes the high king of all elves. Um, fin Finway becomes the high king of Noldor, which is some of the elves. Uh, and Aqualund becomes like an island city with some of the other elves. I don't remember if they had a king. That, or was that Finway? No, they had a king. They don't matter. Okay, cool. Man, lots of things that don't matter. One of the trees, that dude. Uh, anyways, <laughs> Noldor. Love making shit. So Feanor <laughs> learns how to craft things and gets real thirsty about those trees, specifically the one that matters. Uh, and he creates three really shiny gemstones that are like diamonds, but also the sun, I guess, yep. before the sun existed. Uh, Melkor's back, I guess. He just, yeah, we, 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 we said he was reverse exiled and then like change that to he's on parole so he did a fake apology and they're like i guess you can stick around here but you're not allowed to leave valinor because we want the antagonist to <laughs> hang around the white house essentially yep so he he well, they want him where they can keep an eye on him yeah that turned out great for them i'm, I'm sure uh so he he shared a bunch of knowledge because he wanted to get on santa's nice list where santa is the entirety of the elves um but then as he does that, he starts lying and spreading rumors, and he's like, hey, I saw your wife making limbus bread with another dude, and like, you know, just sowing chaos. <laughs> and... <laughs> I want you to know that, by the way, limbus is canonical at this point in time. Okay, good. Like, so, that's, yeah. that's a thing people do eat. So, right so, now. so there could just be the phrase, I saw your wife making limbus with another man, and like, that could just mean something. <laughs> Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, so Feanor goes to his half-brother, uh, to confide in him, but not information, he wants to confide a sword into his stomach, um, which, <laughs> according to John, it's important that he has a sword, I guess. Um, so anyways, he threatens his brother, uh, Manway 
says, hey, that was a real bad thing you did. That's kind of mean. So I'm going to banish you for three years, which is significantly less time than we put Melkor in prison for. But for some reason, that's too long for you. So Feanor <laughs> is gone and he's just like, well, I guess I'll make a castle. And Fenway is just like, well, you know what? I'm going to go to that castle. That sounds cool. Uh, and so they both leave. And then Melkor breaks Pearl and also leaves. I guess he sowed enough chaos by making like two elves leave. And I guess some of the people who follow them. <laughs> uh, Manway notices all this happening. It's just like, you know what? It's probably pretty bad that all of these seeds of chaos have been spread. I'm going to go pardon Feanor. So we're going to make this council and all these other Valar are going to show up. And that way we can unanimously vote to pardon him. And all the Valar are like, you didn't pardon him. So we're not going to show up. And he's like, that doesn't make sense, but whatever. Uh, anyways, while this is happening, Melkor goes to Rom the Vacuous Spider, because I can't remember her actual name right now, even though I should. Ungoliant. Ungoliant, thank you. <laughs> I was like, I know it! <laughs> and Ungoliant hungers. And, uh, so he used, she used cool shadow magic to sneak herself into Valinor with him. Um, yeah. and she humps the tree. Um, yep. and starts humping a bunch of gems <clears throat> that he gives her like their LSD at like a college party. Um, but yep. she notices that like she's got the munchies. one of his other hands isn't, you know, yeah, she's got the munchies from the Tokus Valor or whatever the fuck. <laughs> um, she's like, Hey, you've been feeding me drugs with one hand, but not the other hand. So maybe if you use two hands, it would go faster. And he's like, well, these, the ones in this hand are special. And she says, well, give them to me. And he says, no, I want them. And she goes, humph, and bites him too. And he says, Lamau. Yep. No, sorry, Lamoth. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> Where he just screams really loud. In fact, so loud that he creates an an echo that will never disappear. <laughs> yep. Possibly my favorite thing that has happened. Uh, so I guess they leave. I don't think we ever talked about how they left, but I guess they're just gone now. Um, I don't think they were chased out. I think they were like, well... I got bit, so we're, we're done. Um, so the trees start dying because they were humped by Spider Lady. Um, but they could be revived with the Silmarils. And that would bring light and happiness to all the elves. So naturally, Feanor says, fuck that. Um, and then I have written down that turns out Melkor f killed Fenway. I don't remember. Where, I, I think like Melkor, when they left, like f basically went to that castle and like killed a bunch of people. Um, but not Feanor for some reason. I guess he was on vacay. Fanor wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah. He was on parole. Maybe vacay the bathroom and Melkor just didn't check. Um, so Feanor <laughs> swears on like his pride as an American or something to hunt down Melkor. <laughs> it's the only kind of pride that I imagine lets you into these kinds of dumb situations. Uh, Amanda was like, well, if you leave, you'll be cursed. And that's a bad thing. And Feanor's like, oh, okay. And then he leaves. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of the Nordor are like, yeah, okay, we'll follow that. And then they followed him. A lot of the Nordor are not very intelligent, it seems. So they go to, to Aquatraz <laughs> to get boats. Uh, and then the boat people are like, yeah, that sounds like a really bad plan. We're pretty sure if you guys do that, you'll still continue to be cursed. Because they the guy said that you would. And they're like... Oh, okay, so you're not going to give us the boats? And they're like, no. And they're like, okay, we're going to kill you for those boats. And they're like, oh, okay. So then they kill them for the boats. <laughs> then yep. there's a big thing of ice that they have to get through on these boats. And Feanor is like, well, we're not all going to get through here. So let's just leave a bunch of people behind. And they're like, oh, okay, so we'll go back for them. And then he turns around and shoots a fire arrow or something at the boats and lights them on fire. And he's like, absolutely not. Nobody left behind, only killed. Feanor is an asshole. <laughs> Uh, yep. And then Melkor kill, sends a Balrog to kill Feanor, and it works. And that's the end of Feanor. <laughs> yep. Is that all much. correct? That's all <coughs> canonical? Pretty much. I mean, you skipped the, the oath, yeah. but yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I talked about the oath. I said he promised to kill Melkor. Yeah, he's, he swears <laughs> to hunt down Melkor. Yeah. It's a little bit more than that, but yeah. yeah. And, and uh, then there was a, a curse. To... There, there are sort of two halves of the oath. Fill, fill out a, a couple other things. So you, you mentioned how Ingwe is stupid. Um, yeah. The other two elves that woke up with him were Olwe and Elwe. And Olwe was the, the king of Aquafina. Um, and Elwe uh, is the one who fucked off and then fucked Amaya and became Thingol. 
Oh, he, okay. So, uh, that's actually right where we start, because uh, the book jumps around a whole bunch. Yeah, and... I, I know it's n a non-linear story. Yeah. Or, or so it's like, it's just... linear, but it's like, okay, we're going to do this whole chunk that matters all at once, and then we're going to go back a bit yeah. to tell you about... It's how I want to learn world history. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And while so, that was happening, this was happening over here. Yeah. So we just finished the the bit where uh, Fanor. I'm gonna say Noldor right now, I don't remember what to... his name was before or after, so I'm writing Thingay now. Thingle. Or in... it's Thingle and Melian. What, what was the other uh, his old name? El Elway. Okay, e L W E. Thingay. Okay. <laughs> You like do Tingle. you, man. Okay. <laughs> so, um... Alright, back to Tingle. <laughs> Tingle. Tingle Oompa! Well, bad news. This is how I'm drawing him <laughs> from now on. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. So anyways, um... We're, we're going to go back a little bit uh, from the Noldor. <laughs> we're going to go back to Beleriand and talk about... Uh, <clears throat> the Grey Elves. So, Thingo and Melian bone down. They have a whole bunch of kids. I mean, a lot of the other elves had stuck around with him because he was kind of their ruler. Okay, real quick. Uh, you said bone down with, uh, what's her name? Melian. And she's a Meyer, isn't she? Yeah. She is a Meyer. That was what I was about to ask. <clears throat> is like, what is she? And Meyer are the Greek god? No, the, the lesser angels. No, the lesser gods. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, he, he he ends up kind of expanding his kingdom all across Beleriand, and uh, you know, there's there's like one place where he he really focuses, and then you know, people just spread out. There's little little places people stay, you know, little farmlets and stuff, and then Melkor comes back. And so, real quick, where was, where was the decides... king located? Beleriand. Beleriand. It's where all of the story is going to take place from now on, pretty the, much. The well, all of Thingol's story. Okay. B e l e r i a n d. I got it. First try. <laughs> it is the area to the west of uh, modern day Middle Earth. Oh, modern day Middle Earth. Yes. Um, so. Uh, Mini he, Earth. Yeah. He, uh, you know, builds up this kingdom, and the, you know, eventually Melkor starts sending out creatures that hunt the plains. Like, he has, uh, wargs that, that run about, and, and, uh, orcs start appearing. And orcs are suspected at this point to be um bastardized elves they're elves that have been tortured until they lost their elf manity like not humanity yeah. is not the right term but i was gonna say i, I thought they're, bastardized they're elves elfness. would just be elves who like don't know their dad <laughs> but like can you really call yourself an elf if you don't know your entire thousand year heritage well i mean clearly because like Ingwe and Co didn't have any heritage. They were just there. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah, that's why they're in charge. Yeah. And they lived basically um. forever. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Well, uh, but not Fanor, though. No. No. But he wasn't one or of the Fingwe. original kings. Yeah, Fingwe didn't learn live forever either. Nope. <laughs> he was the first elf to die ever. <laughs> oh. So, um,. You know, they start, the orcs start coming out, and and they're they're not an army at this point. They're just orcs roaming around. And, uh... I'm assuming these were experiments to him. He's just like, oh, let's see what happens if I fuck up an elf. Nice, now it's got anxiety. Yeah. Let's just let it go free and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, and and some of these are, like, um... They'll, they'll start capturing the uh, elves that, that are roam too far away and those become more experiments oh so they just want a family um, huh <laughs> uh, it's a found family so no, i'm gonna write found family <laughs> so eventually 
Melkor comes back and he he just wants to fuck up whatever he can. So he he actually puts together a good army and and goes out and starts fucking up uh, Thingol's countryside. And so Melian uh, does some cool magic and she creates um, it's a girdle they call it. I don't remember what the. So it's a belt. You could just look up a belt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, cool. Oh. Melkor makes an army, and Melon uses magic to make a belt. That'll teach you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like a... It's, it's like a force field. Oh, it's a force field it's like belt. a force field. Yeah. Uh, and it... it uh, let me look at the map. It's going to be on the map, probably. Is it, like, around the kingdom, basically? Yes. It's, it's, it's around his kingdom of Doriath. And it... Uh, makes it so that anyone that they don't want to can't come inside there. Um, now, they obviously could if, like, Melkor came out and directly attacked them, but he he's not. He's a coward. Yeah. So And it's kind nobody... of hidden. It keeps it hidden, too. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's surrounding a, a forest. A giant, really, really big forest. So, yeah. uh, I mean... I think they could figure out where it was. They just, you know, they're not strong enough to get through. Uh, so that becomes his his enchanted home, and um, some of the elves still stick around outside because, you know, this is my land. I, my forefathers died on this one. I'm gonna they farm didn't even it have until I die. Forefathers yet? Like they were <laughs> basically like, this is like first or second generation. Yeah, I, mean, a I guess lot of they just there are. I, I guess this so they is why just the... actually just like this piece of land. They're like, yeah. no, I like it here. I mean, I'll take the risk. To be fair, maybe like the beginning elves, like within three hundred years, there's like the same amount of generations as humans in that time. It's just that the first generation is still there because <laughs> you know they don't yeah. die. So it's just like, yeah, elves still get horny when they're like twenty. So like in a hundred years, there's five gens. <laughs> yeah. So he uh, Moria started sending out a bunch more uh, orcs. So. Uh, they, he sent out two armies of orcs, and Thingol and Melian beat them back, uh, and then they, then they created the, the Girdle of Melian, and, um, and a lot of the, the other elves ended up just retreating into fortified coastal towns, havens, like a, like a gray one, in fact, maybe a gray haven. Uh, where the gray elves live in the havens i mean all of these all of these people are gray elves so exactly far. that's that's my point <laughs> um, <Girdle. laughs> yeah it's it's the girdle uh, that is acts as a hurdle for mokor it's the girdle so uh then then right now oh oh actually during this time the dwarves have awoken at this point and have already like really done some work i mean i mean they they, they were they, alive for 0.9 seconds with which they had the time to consider maybe we should like dig and make things and then they were put to sleep and like i guess we'll dream about those things for 500 years and then they woke up they're like all right time to get working immediately yeah so they they had at this point made a bunch of halls mansions and, and cities on the east side it over in middle earth area so they made um belagost in the north and nagrod in the south and uh greatest of all these mansions was cut mansions of, was cause doom uh later called moria yeah moria's as old as the beginning of time basically <laughs> see, see this is the part uh, where i'm like i don't understand the timeline how how long has it been since the world was created. A while. A while. Yeah. yeah so by, by the but... beginning of time, you mean maybe a thousand years. <laughs> um, so the the dwarves are kind of roaming about at this bit. They're they're looking for other cool things to do, and they come upon the gray elves, and they're like, "Dope, other people," uh, because wow, uh, y'all we're fuckers not racist. Are tall. Because honestly, there's not a lot of racism in Tolkien stuff, which is cool. Yeah. Despite the fact that there's like a ton of different races, 
Um, and, oh, yeah. you know, dwarves and elves don't have a problem with each other. That's that's nice at this point. Um, so, uh, you know, Thingol welcomes the dwarves and is like, yo, y'all are cool. And they're like, yeah, you're cool too, and you're rich. And Melian's like, hey, we're probably going to be attacked at some point. You should have them, like, work for us a little. And so he <laughs> gives them, like, a ton of really nice jewels and pearls and stuff. And th there's, like, a pearl that's as big as your head. And and they like it a lot. So they build him uh, pretty much a dwarven mansion. Like a, like a f full dwarven fortress mansion cavern thingy that he lives in from then on. So, so is it they give him the gems to, like as payment to like help protect them no he's giving them the gems to build him a thing oh just to build him a house yeah well like a cave house and he said who, who yeah, is it like a like a thingle the, the thingle yeah um so yeah they minigroth the thousand caves so they they worked with each other and it was it was a dual effort the um dwarves and the elves and so you know it's pretty dope pretty awesome building and uh, to the point where when the nolder eventually show up they're also like whoa <laughs> this is super cool this is like as good as some of the things over in valinor but you've never even seen valinor <laughs> um but meanwhile, they're they're fighting uh, the orc armies off, and uh, they've got this this girdle, so they're mostly protected. But I mean, they don't want just orcs running wild. And their uh, Melkor sends out another giant army, and that is when Feanor shows up, burns the the ships, and then comes out and destroys the army, which to the gray uh, elves is like whoa we didn't think they'd be coming back but like they're here and they're helping this is amazing because they don't know that feanor is a piece of shit yeah and then you know feanor uh chases after the retreating orcs and gets ambushed and pile driven by a bunch of balrogs <laughs> i so, i do love that they're like wow i can't believe feanor showed up here that's so helpful it's weird that he burned those boats it's kind of a a weird thing to do because <laughs> now he can't go back home where he lives and his family is unless they're yeah. dead but elves can't die <laughs> so the the next thing that happens is we skip back over to the valar for a little bit so the valar are pretty sad because you know the trees are gone and feanor's uh stupid and you know they're kind of sad because they didn't really want feanor to be stupid quick question about and this. because yeah the, the trees are dead right yeah how does anyone see uh it's pretty dark D did stars. no one notice that there's, everything got really dark there's stars no i mean I, I think everyone figured it out when you know it's just the weird trees that got the light sucked out of them it's just weird that no one seemed to care <laughs> well i mean when they first were born like they there was also darkness because the the trees didn't really start until after well, yeah, they had I mean, been they need, made already. The photosynthesis requires sunlight. <laughs> so. Oh, I'm sorry. You meant those trees. I'm sorry. I legitimately thought we were just talking about regular trees. <laughs> so anyways, um, they're sad about the trees being dead. And Ninya walks up there because she's the goddess of grief. And she That's, cries okay, and yeah, sings okay. a song of grief. And... And so she's really sad, and she sings this beautiful song. And because of this song uh, and magic, the uh, the trees grow just a little bit more. They put out, like, the tiniest bit of life that they have remaining in them to create a uh, – the, the silver tree produces a single silver leaf, and the golden tree produces a single golden fruit. And they're picked, and then the trees die forever. So, they now have these two lights, these two uh, gleaming portions of the tree, the, all that remains, and... Well, uh, and the Silmarils. Yeah, and so they start 
uh, they they give these to to Maya uh, to take up into the skies and uh, run across the lands at and they they take breaks so when one of them's running the other one takes a little break although moon man uh sorry silver man is a little bit uh hasty and, and likes to run across the sky at random points yeah yeah and, and sometimes he's not he's so, like turned a bit so you can only see like a sliver of him yeah well yeah there's um melkor doesn't like the new light in the sky in fact oh. when the sun goes up for the first time uh the uh, it it like burns the skin of Melkor and his cohorts, and they flee into uh, the caverns and stuff of of his his fortress. And then he starts making a bunch of smoke. He 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 gets high and he like blows that toke all over the place, and that creates the fog that that his men can walk under. But he's he's pissed off at the sun and the moon, so he sends some. Because he got uh, a little sunburn. Yeah, so he yeah. sends the the wolves out to to chase the people across the sky, and that's the way the sun and the moon work. Yeah, Yay. I'll be honest, I don't really know a lot of what you said except that he got sunburn and then said, "I'm gonna do weed." <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, so meanwhile, the Nolder just showed up there. The they do a couple big fights. Um, the uh. They build a bunch of strongholds. Uh, Doriath is actually like right outside um, where Melkor's base is. Dor Doriath? Doriath, the Thingol and Melian's place. I don't think we ever. They're, they're forced. Probably not, but I did say it. Doriath. Yeah. Um... Doriath is the name of his kingdom. I said it's near um... Melkor? Yeah, it's it's like right outside his doors. Um, there's there's like a a plane between them, but there's it's just a couple kilometers between the two of them. Yeah, it it was but built it, in Melkor's uh like front garden. Yeah, well, I mean, Melkor built his castle in their front garden. I'll just write that it was they built on first. Melkor's porch. <laughs> um. So the uh, the sons of Feanor build a bunch of strongholds uh, to like the west and and the north area of that, and uh, they build a ton of of like a cavern city of Nargothrond. The names are great. Um, uh, Nargothrond, the Slashgar. <laughs> yeah, uh, Nargothrond on the river Narog. Uh, Wait, really? <laughs> N neat. Yeah, I did not know that word existed. I just kind of made it one time. I mean, with the language, obviously. Yeah. Um. Weird that a river is named. No. Uh, your 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 name would have been uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, it it means a little demon. It's like a demon of leaping flame. <laughs> okay. Is that where you got that name from? Yeah. I always wondered. Yeah. Uh, it, it was Raug, which came similar from Balrog. It was like another version of the ROG. Okay. Um, and I, I believe Nar was... Uh, I, I believe that's... Let me see. Oh, yeah, Nar, Nar is translated and like, can be translated as fire. Cool. Yeah, so, and Rog was a uh, demon. One of the, uh... So, so like, Feanor's kids come up, and they, they make a bunch of, of places to the south. Uh, or, actually, they make a bunch of fortresses. And then Fingolfin is the the brother of Feanor. He I'm was sorry, the person that was left on the ice. St start, start the sentence over. Fingolfin, the brother of Feanor, who was left on the ice with all of this, his people, finally makes it across the ice into the place. And Feanor's like, or Feanor's kids are like, oh yeah, whoops, uh, forgot about you, and we forgot that we had done that, and we're kind of impressed that you survived, and half of us are really sorry that 
it happened at all. Like, we weren't in charge, couldn't really do a whole lot. But we're still super ashamed, so we're going to leave the things we've already made and go further south. <laughs> and so they made their cities further south, and Fingolfin kind of picked up where they were. And um, one of the, the people, uh, Turgon, is one of the sons of Fingolfin. He, he's the ruler of Nargothrond, and he gets this idea one time. He's walking in the mountains. Ruler of Lightning? And... Nargothrond. See, this the, is the, the point where it just on the starts river. losing uh, me, is you have named a lot of people and places very quickly, and I don't <laughs> know if any of them will show up and if they're important to write down. <laughs> Tur like... Tur Turgon matters. Turgon matters, and the, the thing I'm about to say matters as well. So Turgon... Turgon's just walking this dead uh, riverbed in the mountains, and Ulmo shows up because it used to be his territory, so he still has power there or whatever. And he tells him that, hey, the place you're walking to is a completely enclosed mountain area, and there's only one access point, and it's this tiny little um, uh, dry riverbed that you're walking, and I still have magic here. I can protect you if you build something up here. And Turgon goes, fuck yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and and so, I mean, it, it takes like a dozen years or whatever. Meanwhile, he's in his other place. But they build the, the mountain fortress of Gondolin, uh, which Turgon eventually moves to. And they... it. It becomes another secret place, like kind of like Doriath is, where you know people can't just go in and out of unless they're welcome. It seems like uh, there's a lot of are... secret places in the Silmarillion, and a lot of them get attacked by Melkor. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the, well, the safest place is like a, a forest that has a big neon sign that says "We're open." <laughs> <laughs> um. So, Gondolin gets built, and they basically make a rule that like nobody can come or leave we're just gonna stay here and when we're needed because like they've they've been told by Olmo that they'll be needed at some point and he will tell them they'll just rush out with like a million noldorian who yeah, he's like, have the best you'll run out with swords and they're like what are swords we've never had to use that in our hunting he's like oh, okay listen fanor invented this thing no one likes it i need you all to happen <laughs> so that gets made. Um, uh, With the heavy uh, emphasis one of on the... no one leaving, who knows where it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, meanwhile, um, during the fight where Fanor got uh, taken, uh, yeah. or, <laughs> or where, he, where he got deaded, yeah. um, they... Uh, one of the sons of Fanor, uh, Maedro, I think? Maedros, was captured. Um, and so, and, and they, he was taken to, to Morgoth, and they hung him from the face of a precipice. And uh, he was caught to the rock by the wrist of his right hand in a band of seals. So he's just hanging there. Uh, and um, one. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Does an eagle come exactly. and check out his liver every day? And then it grows no. back? No. So they're, you know, the son of, of Fingolfin is kind of sad because, like, his his kind of brothers in arms of Feanor are you know there's there's a rift between them so Is the rift uh the life and the the river sticks <laughs> <laughs> so fingon uh decides that it's the best fingon. way to heal that that feud the son of fingolfin i thought that was i, said it. I thought that was a moment ago turgon <laughs> everyone I, has I've 30 sons. Down, son of golfin <laughs> Yes. Uh, Fingolfin had Fingon, Turgon, and Arid Hell. Well, I'm just going to write other son think... so we, we can't talk about the third one because I don't have to change what I said. What's his name? All right. Yep. Fingon. Fingon. Or were you asking about the other son? Are his Fingons? No. Go on. Um, nope. But Madras does. 
Uh, Fingon decides that he's he's going to heal this rift by saving Madras, and so he uh, sneaks into uh, Morgoth's stronghold. It's the first person inside of it that is an evil or captured, and uh, he he looks around. He, he even uh, looks in the dark vaults beneath the earth while the orcs are still cowering a little bit from the sun, uh, from their their sunburn. And then he 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 can't find Madras because he's you know looking all over the place and can't find him. And and then he comes out and he starts playing on his harp. And Madras above him picks up the song, um, and and that's when he finds out where he is. And he climbs up to him and uh, he's tries to save him, but you know he can't really do it. And he he can't get down to the right point without you know taking forever. And so he prays to Manwi and asks for his help. And the eagles are coming! <laughs> so the eagles show up, um, and because they the speak... The best solution, they're, they're, always. <laughs> they, they are directly under Manwi. He, he commands them directly. Um, comes and Fingon gets on their back and, and gets gets out and tries to to break the thing open but he can't so he just cuts off Madras's hand so that you know he can be saved and then there's no more rift yeah oh, oh that that did it <laughs> yep wow that wild what did I call him Matrix. okay uh I mean, to be fair, it's also not the same generation that caused the rift. Yeah, I just want you to appreciate that I just said he can't find him, so he jams, and he just has a guitar. Uh, I also, so we have one more. I also, you know, I didn't want to write Melkor's temple, so I wrote Dreamland. <laughs> okay. He's Kirby. Yeah. It's also fun uh, to write so... infiltrates Dreamland. <laughs> Another thing to mention right now is, uh, so there was a so Eredhel, the other son of Fingolfin, actually the daughter of Fingolfin. Yeah. Or is she? Not does she son. matter now? She matters now, but for for what? a little bit. What's her name? Ariel. She'll, she'll be gone. Yeah, Ariel. That works. Uh. She's the sister of Turgon, so she she gets brought to Gondolin when Turgon goes there, and she kind of gets tired of being in Gondolin because you know there's no news coming in and like TV's stale and they only have reruns. So she asks to leave, and they don't want her to, but like it's his sister, so he can't refuse her. So she leaves. Um, where where, and... where, where is she leaving? Gondolin, the the secret city, the secret mountain city. Um, so she goes down to uh, Doriath, but at this point Doriath is close to the Noldor. I'll get to that in just a second because things bounce about all over the place. Uh, so she kind of wanders around for a bit until uh, she finds a piece of shit, uh, a dark elf. Uh, so this this dark elf eel, uh, kind of kind of a a, a friend of Thingol or a, a kinsman of Thingol, uh, had his own little dark forest, and he he likes her. He thinks she looks pretty, so he uh, casts a spell on her so that she can't get out of his forest, and eventually she just settles down with him because he won't let her escape, and then he marries her and they have a son. Uh, so he, he travels a lot over to the dwarves and, and hangs out with them and trades them things and then comes back and, and she teaches her son, uh, all about the Grey Elves and the, the Noldor and all about Gondolin and stuff. And, um, her son's like, you know what, I, I want to go to that place i'm tired of being here my daddy's mean 
she's like, yeah, you're right. Your daddy's a piece of shit. And so I'm glad that they... you're saying that because I already wrote down that he's the worst. And I also said they get married, but fuck this dude. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> I hate uh, him. Th th yeah. There's there's <laughs> there's nothing particularly redeemable about him. No, there uh, isn't. Now, to be fair, so... I I'm not going to say that she's the greatest because she's like, I want to leave Gondolin. They're like, well, you can't leave Gondolin. They're like, okay, I'm leaving Gondolin. They're like, okay, well, we don't want people to leave because they don't, we don't want them to tell people. But, like, that shouldn't be a problem. She's like, hey, new fam, let me tell you about Gondolin. <laughs> so uh, they they start going back. And, you know, because they wait until, like, a day after he leaves to go talk to some dwarves. And they start leaving. But, um he decided to turn back and he came back to the house and was like they're not here they i'm gonna go hunt them down because he's a piece of shit and so he chases after them but they don't know it yet because yeah. like they think they've got more time and uh so he sort of catches up to them right as they find the uh dry riverbed to gondolin and so they you know, go up there, and he follows them secretly, and you know, when they get to, to Gondolin, um, Turgon's like, oh, cool, you're back! Uh, please don't ask to leave again. And she's like, nah, I, w I won't. I've seen the outside world. It sucks. I got married to this douchebag. And, um... Like, huh, well, it's a good thing he didn't follow you here. And, uh, yeah, and then immediately some guards are like, hey, cool, uh, by the way, we found this person, do you know him? And the Dark Elf comes out here, and they're like, yep, that's my husband, I want him to die. And, um, and they, they say that, uh, the Dark Elf either, you know, has, has to follow the rules. Uh, he's not his sister, so... He doesn't get any special um, dispensation. Yeah. So he has two choices. He can either stay in Gondolin or die. And the Dark Elf's like, nah, I'm going to leave because I'm a piece of shit. And so they lock him in jail. And then they bring him out the next day. And they're like, all right, you got your choices again. This is your last chance. You can either choose to stay here or you can die. And he tries to kill his son with a poisoned lance because... Uh, some stupid thing about, like, his son is his flesh and nobody else can have it but him. Like, you know, you don't own anyone. You're a piece of shit. Um, so, you know, the, the sister, Ariel, um, s sees what's gonna happen, steps between them, gets hit in the shoulder, and she dies. Um, and so they, they throw the, the piece of shit off the walls and he dies. Um, um, where did he get it? So moving on, they were in, uh, they threw him in solitary confinement. He came back out. And he's like, I have a poison lance. And they're like, that's physically impossible to hide on any person whatsoever. How did you do that? And he was like, I'm gonna stab my son. So um, uh, last last bit about the Nolder before we go talk about the Nolder some more. Um, they uh. Like, 50 years have, have passed at this point, and, um, uh, the, uh, Morgoth sends out, uh, an army with a dragon, Glaurung, um, and Glaurung, uh, is the first dragon ever to be seen, and he's like, I'm gonna fuck y'all up, but he's also, like, a baby, he's, he's just a drake at this point, um, and uh they they whoop his ass uh they don't kill him like they just drive him away but they they whoop morgoth's ass basically although no, morgoth never fights so yeah. they they whoop all of his soldiers fight uh asses and then they lay a, the siege of of angband the name of uh dreamland um which lasted for 400 years you know 400 year siege yeah i mean for elves that's so minutes. yeah so anyways meanwhile uh let's talk about the the gray elves for a second and then we can say that that's the the halfway point or whatever uh, hold on i have to grab a dragon <laughs> okay um 
so Thingle and Melian, they're they're happy or whatever. This is this is a while back. The Noldor have just shown up, and uh, a couple of the Noldor want to come and say hi. And so you know, at this point, they can. And uh, Melian wants to to have news of of what's going on in Valinor. How are the trees right now? Are they pretty? Are they in bloom? And so they they ask Gladriel to to come in and talk to them. Yes, Gladriel's at this point. Um, I remember where so... the thing goes. It's been a while <laughs> since I've had to draw Trogdor. <laughs> yeah, I knew what you were drawing. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm not even in the same room as my computer, and I knew what you were drawing. <laughs> so, um. Galadriel shows up and and talks to them and anytime uh Melian tries to talk about, you know, the trees or why the Noldar are here and like how's all my friends doing? Uh Galadriel shuts down <laughs> cuz she don't want to speak about that. It's the saddest thing that's ever happened to the universe. Wait, um, where is Gla why why is it sad? Gla Galadriel's in, in Doriath be, uh, talking to Melian about Why uh, is that so sad? Not talking be The trees are the prettiest things the that have ever existed Oh those trees okay. Sorry yeah. I, I thought you said something yeah. about her family dying not not the, the no. trees No and, and also you know the fact that the Noldor have slaughtered a ton of elves and burned the boats and left the people on the ice and also were pieces of shits with regards to the Silmarils. Um, so Gladriel doesn't want to talk about it and you know, eventually leaves and goes back to her people and Melian goes to Thingle and is like, yo, there's something up about these Noldor. They maybe ain't the best. I wouldn't trust them. And Thingle's like, ah, well, we'll see. We'll, we'll get some information. In. And so he sends out some scouts and they hear bits and pieces of what happened and bring it back and Thingle puts it all together is like oh fuck all of you y'all are all the worst elves that have ever existed and so that's he makes it so that no one from Noldor can go through the um the girdle of Melian and also um at this point like the language has has kind of changed a little bit from when they last we're on the same continent because um, you know it's been like 2,000 years or whatever the language is going to change a little bit so he makes it so that oh, uh, so now like uh, some like slang and jargon is like actually mean yeah um, so he says that the people from Valar who speak Quinian that Quinian cannot be spoken anywhere within his realms or to any gray elf and and all the gray elves agree with this because they hear the news and they're like no fuck those people yeah. and instead they will only speak sindarin and that's why tolkien created extra languages no it's because he wanted to come up with two languages and then he had to write a book that included both of them